Good morning, Vegas. Thank you for joining us here back on Vegas Realty Check, local Las Vegas real estate news. And I'm Trish Williams. And I'm Tiana Carroll. Yes, thank you guys for coming back today. We're in, what what week are we, third week? We're like in all the weeks of February, the 22nd. We are the 22nd of February, 2024. So January felt like it was like creeping and took like forever. It felt like the longest month ever. February feels like it's like just zooming by. I don't know what's going on in my world, but like that's just how <laughs> things are happening right now. And like it's already almost the end. I thought both, both months zoomed by for me anyway. Really? Yeah, but um, I saw a meme the other day and I was laughing. It's like, why was January in slow motion and February wants to go 85 miles an hour? Oh my gosh, so it's not just me. <laughs> no. Thank you. Apparently Thank you, meme. <laughs> yes. So. Well, that meme was made for you. Who yes. knew? Yeah, uh, but no, all of it seems fast for me. I mean, even if I'm looking back, like November, December, January, I, I don't like this uh, whole adulting thing because it seems to go fast forward each and every year gets quicker and quicker yeah yeah like is that happening in the world or is it like our age that's making it happen which we're still very young very young very young so <laughs> young so young <laughs> but you know. barely legal to be here that's yeah right. that that's it that's it yeah yeah so. exactly uh, we all wish but um <laughs> <laughs> so that's all about real estate no not not real estate yeah. okay so. but it is a real estate show so yes, we yes, we do in our format every month, every month, every week. We're here every Thursday morning, and every week we start off by doing our numbers in our inventory, so that way you, the viewers, have an idea of what our uh, supply and demand looks like. It's always great market indicators. Yes, great, it, it is. And um, so, single family residence is looking at thirty three sixty nine. Yep, thirty three sixty nine. We're just playing right there. Yeah, number has not changed much. Um, there was like a builder um, synopsis that happened recently, which I didn't attend, but I did get the um, like kind of rundown from the notes and everything from it. Okay. Um, so uh, builders are building a lot. Builders are building a lot. And if you just drive around the valley, you know that. Yeah. It's obvious. You can see it everywhere. But... It's everywhere. It used to be like in rings, like around a tree, right? <laughs> it was always the outskirts of the town and the city sort of built up around these rings in the center of, around the center of the strip. But now they are picking up like any uh, piece of dirt by an off ramp for apartments. They are picking up any, I mean, you've seen them go for as little as five acres and just doing like little cul-de-sacs and stuff. They are taking anything to build. Yeah. Anywhere. And, <laughs> and the biggest impending challenge um, that the builders are seeing coming up in the future is um, we're running out of dirt. Yep, where that dirt is. Yeah, so um, some of it is like just owned by the BLM, you know, the right. Bureau of Land Management, um, that BLM. And <laughs> <laughs> That's the one we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. So um, some of it's owned by them and they, uh, you know, there's been some negotiations like Summerlin recently bought some. Right. Well, last, last uh, was it August or September, they released two parcels of land. One was down in Paradise, and it was going to be set for um, community park. And, and then they released a bunch in Summerlin that was bought up to builders for residential. Yeah. So, um, yeah, biggest challenge that uh, Las Vegas faces in the coming years, not immediately, but uh, running out of dirt. And right. what I see again back to back to you crashers yeah. um, what i see um in the future is again we have no dirt that's going to be a very limited amount of inventory um and well as far as the states go we got i mean the state we got tons of dirt right yeah but in the las vegas metro area because we are sort of surrounded by mountains we're in this bowl we are running out of dirt mm -hmm. in that aspect yeah and we'll see things grow to places like Pahrump that's nearby. Yeah. Um, and well, that's all part of my future forecast. Yeah. The city's already growing. If you've seen Pahrump like seven years ago and you look at it now, oh my gosh, it's like it's a, it's a new place. It's already in right. growth mode. It's still a little desert town, but it is definitely getting a lot more uh, amenities and fast food, big box stores, things like that. So the conveniences. And as Vegas grows, we're just moving closer and closer and closer to Pahrump. Yeah. Blue Diamond is built all the way up to that last stop gas station. Yeah. And so it's just getting where 
Prompt's not the hour commute. Now it's like a 45 minute commute. <laughs> yeah. And, and quick shout out to Boulder City, because when I was growing up here, Boulder City was like where people that couldn't afford Vegas moved to. <laughs> oh, no. But now they're like where people who can't afford Boulder City move into Vegas. Uh, yeah. Like Boulder City is like, it, it's getting to be like a, a really big hotspot now. So. Yeah. It's it's sort of feeling kind of like um, Calico Basin. Yeah. Like it's a little... Uh, sort of prime piece of property that everybody city that people want to move to cute yeah. little quaint town and it has like this like little like hipster vibe yeah, in their yeah, downtown yeah. area yeah. and it's got some like historic buildings and what people are doing um which you see this happen whenever there's like you know things changing in a neighborhood they're buying the old like 1950s house and just tearing it all down and starting over with these big mega mansions that overlook the lake so it's absolutely beautiful yeah it, it is is definitely becoming desi more desirable than when we were growing up yeah which yeah. was very recently remember we're young we yeah. were just barely out of high school just the other day <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah it's like before people would be like oh i'm moving to boulder city it's like okay uh, Oh, you, you, your yeah. life sucks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but that's not the case anymore. It all changes. But I mean, I've said it time and time again that I think that um, service workers and things are going to be able to commute back and forth from um, Pahrump into Vegas because Vegas might become so unaffordable uh, if the town grows. And then as far as um, losing dirt, I would like to see the city go vertical, especially like around the downtown strip area and start building like... Um, townhomes and condos and high rises and stuff that people can use as housing rather than rather than them doing what has been talked about and slated is to carve into the mountains so then like other cities will just have homes and lights all over the mountain they're only doing it in a sky right. right now and so i have um I have concerns about that, which could be unfounded. Not I'm only, no geolog was it geologist? <laughs> geologist? <laughs> Are those the people? I don't we know. We gotta go I don't have even a survey right. done before but, we can dig into a mountain. Well, have you ever looked at a fault line map for Las Vegas? Oh yeah, we're right there. It terrifies there. me. Like yeah. there's fault lines all over the city. So like when, when you talk about like building up and more high rises, I'm like ah. That sounds so scary like that. Um, we right, are. We have a really... lot of fault lines in this city. Well, yeah. What is it? The San Andreas is uh, almost dead ends into Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know even where my home is, it's like on a fault line. So <laughs> she's afraid of fault lines. So she's like, this ends, looks like a great place to, to one. Be. Yeah. yeah. This looks like a great place to build. I'll live right here. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's just like, it's just like that terrifying thing that like, you know, luckily, and where do we have wood around here? Well, like, just, on, I okay, have, no, well, here you can use my noggin. You can yeah. knock on wood. So uh, luckily we haven't, we haven't had any like big events happen, you know, but that's still, it, it, it is something to, you know, like wonder if that's ever gonna gonna happen, but yeah, yeah. So well, things change. I mean, we were talking about uh, Vegas not having water two years ago because boats <laughs> and bodies were showing up at the lake, yeah. and with all of this rain, it came up um, almost uh, to the lowest point. Po it's over the dead pool now. Yeah, yeah. That's I want to say awesome. seven feet, but that sounds like ridiculous. Somebody said that to me yesterday and I'm like, mm, no, one inch of rain is like how many acre feet of water. There's no way they raised seven feet, but it very well could have. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I haven't we, been out there. We Sorry. get rain all the time. Like we're in Seattle now. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, dramatic. <laughs> we had two weeks of rain this winter <laughs> so and now we're in Seattle. I don't think so. I'm like, it just doesn't feel like Vegas. I've never seen so much water so but i kind of love it yeah it's, it, it's nice every time i see the rain i'm like oh, I, I i hate the rain i'm a desert girl you know so okay. i'm not used to this but i'm like oh it's a good thing we need it so whatever. yeah no i like the rain i like all of the elements to come in for like a minute like a little vacation like oh we're, we have a week of rain woohoo! or we have a couple days of wind no problem but I don't want it sticking around. Yeah. I just remind myself we need the water. And yeah. My fruit like, trees will look great when yeah. this is all done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All of the trees um, at my house have already got buds and stuff mm -hmm. all over them. I'm like, yay, spring is almost here. Spring, yay. And today feels like spring. It's beautiful out there. It's it bright. It's sunny. It's blue. And it's almost 68 degrees. Wow. Yeah. We're back to good weather. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, 
<clears throat> we got a little distracted there, so. <laughs> <laughs> We're all builders, so. Okay, we covered one of three numbers. So. Okay, so how many did we sell this week? 379 homes sold and this week. That's pretty good, pretty that's good. That's pretty good. And price reductions dropped. Dropped. So price drops dropped. Uh, <laughs> price drops dropped, and I think that has to do because uh, price numbers are not going up. Yeah. Where's yeah. the inventory, kiddos? So the prices dropped to 315. Now. Here's one thing that I've been seeing, which I, I guess the numbers aren't showing this yet. They're not like revealing this thing yet. It's just kind of like what I'm seeing out there in the world. Right. A little. Is January was like on fire. Everybody's doing everything in January. I feel like it kind of slowed down in February. Like it's, maybe. the rates did go up a little bit. Uh, yeah. 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 So maybe that like caused some pullback or some whatever, but I... I mean, we still have movement. Yes, we're not like, you know, we haven't not come stagnant. to a halt. Yeah. But January felt way busier than February is feeling so far. Maybe maybe it's not busier. You're just more in flow because December felt so slow like you were on vacation. Yeah. So yeah. maybe now you're like in the swing of things and you're into the activity of doing activities. So it doesn't feel as busy. Yeah, yeah, it's like the roller coaster of real estate. That yeah, because February has been pretty busy for. And there has I've been seeing multiple offers and, and well, that's things what like I'm that. saying. Things are changing. There's still it's such a weird thing because um, each deal. Obviously, we talk about how each deal is its own life force or whatever. But usually, you'll have a lot of the same life forces happening at the same time. Like when people are overbidding, most offers are overbidding. Or if people are getting concessions or below list price, most people are offering that. Right now, does it feel like it is a wonky mix of some people are getting concessions and some people are yeah. offering over list price? It's just all over the road right now. So I was with a client yesterday looking at, um, he's looking at townhouse. Houses. Yeah. And oh my gosh. So I have a question instead of like <laughs> listener questions, I have a question to the listeners. Okay. Um, We're if, reversing this here, kids. Yeah, Pay attention. Yeah. She's got a question. I, I, inquiry minds want to know. Like, okay. So I was um, looking at a bunch of townhouses. So a lot of townhouses, it's very common in the valley where a townhouse community will cover the roof. Right, the HOA will uh, cover the roof. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's hit and miss, not always. But not always. It, we see it a lot. It's common. So I ran across three different communities where they have an assessment that's almost equal to their HOA dues that, you know, that was bringing these HOA dues to $400, $500 a month. Yeah. And the assessment was because they cover the roofs. And over the last year or so, we've had so much rain and our, our roofs here were not built for this rain. <laughs> right. We can, we can handle 115 degree weather day after day, but you start adding a little wa water to the valley and the valley's like, mm, I don't know what this is. I'm not a fan. We kind of weren't made for this. Um, so the assessments like on these HOAs went up like so tremendously because of the roofs, that the, the roof repairs that they had to do from the rain. So now the homeowners are paying this. And it's like, you know, I even talked to a homeowner that I called, um, you know, just to like ask like, what's going on with the HOA with this assessment? Because the seller didn't know really when it was going to stop, how it was going to end. And I happen to know someone that Well, that in community. his defense, assessments usually for HOAs tend to be open-ended. We're going to try it for a little bit, see how we do, and we might need to extend it. Yeah. And I'm like, I, so I ran across it, three different communities, all of them substantial. And I was like, this really like sucks for the homeowners, you know, like that sucks for the homeowners. Your sucks. dues increase double, like that's, that's awful. And why don't, so like my mind, you know, is like, where's the solution, right? Why don't they go? And so I'm asking people out there if anybody even knows if this is possible and I don't know either. So, and you know, it's not, they don't teach us this in real estate school, but why don't they go like to their like board meeting and, and, and talk and vote on this where like, I mean, at some point, maybe they all agree to cover their own roof over their own building. You know, if we're talking single-story townhouses, right? Right. You cover your own roof, and instead of paying the assessment to cover everybody's roof, you have damage. That would probably cost less than than a you know two hundred dollar assessment that goes on for two years to replace your roof on your little townhouse yourself if you need to, or do your own repairs. Like, can't they like just change that? 
Okay, well, with HOAs, <laughs> they could possibly change everything, but um, the reason they do that is not for the specific roof, it's for the health of the community. So if we rewind back to like 2018, I had a California client who was looking to move here and she wanted to be close to the strip and because she was, um, you know, a walker and she didn't want to have to get a car and whatever. So we were looking down by like um, Sunrise Hospital and Maryland Parkway between mm -hmm. Desert Inn and and uh, Sahara. So and there same some location. There's like those really okay, old so, vintage, okay, so vintage okay, townhouses. Okay, so you're talking They're like, what cool. is it off of like Vegas, that it's Vegas just that Valley? Like area, that like historic Vegas Alley yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, area so, by the Las Vegas Country Club. And yep, yep, all yep. Of this those. was across the yeah. street. So this is somewhat similar. So when we went in there, there was a leak in the roof and it was causing mold down the... Um, storage closet on the balcony. So there wasn't mold in the actual unit, but mold is never good, right? It should be remediated before you move into it. I mean, you have the choice not to, you do what you want, but it's just a suggestion. <laughs> But um, they had a special assessment because whoever managed the community beforehand had run the, the um, HOA into the ground and they didn't have any money to do any of those repairs and they were liable and they weren't single story, they were two stories, oh, right? Yeah. So it was the apartment conversions. But um, so they put on a special assessment and that special assessment is really what broke the deal besides the mold because if they've been willing to like fix the um because it was the air conditioning that was leaking that was causing it it yeah. wasn't like you know occasionally we get rain and so there it needed to be repaired and the hoa wasn't willing to make that repair obviously before the purchase because they only work for uh people who own the property it's double-edged sword right yeah so um we ended up not canceling that deal but when i was talking to other agents that had listings and stuff in there because i wanted to get it an idea of what was going on. I wasn't talking to the HOA at that point. They weren't returning my call. That's what I, they were figuring out, that um, the management of the community had been so bad for so long, they just didn't have the money to do their obligations. So then they were grabbing pieces from each tenant to sort of fill that treasure chest of cash so they could fix properties. So now that was in 18. So you're saying years later, it's still the same thing that those roofs have not been fixed and they're still adding a special assessment? Because at the time, they were adding um, $85 a month, which yeah. would have taken the HOA to almost $200 a month. And back in 18 for a HOA townhome, that was a lot. So I'm seeing one assessment yesterday that was $360 a month. Additional assessment yeah. on top of the yeah. HOA. Oh, and for listeners out there, you have your HOA payment, but the HOA can come in and put a special assessment like to take care of something specific like repaving the community roads or the roof or whatever. And it's usually supposed to be temporary, right? We're going to do this for a year. We're going to do this for 18 months until we build those reserves. It yeah. doesn't always happen though because some communities are now – we're in – the, like, what is it? The Heritage Squares, they're in year three of adding uh, about 20 to $40 a year. I mean, a month onto the HOA for like the third year in a row for special assessment. So I, I just feel like there's got to be some like relief or solution for homeowners out there to fix this because I, in my opinion, it's getting out of control. Yeah. Like you can't just like open-ended, you know, I mean, adding three, $400 to your, your payment a month can that can break people yeah that changes budget yeah so um i there's there's i i feel like it's it's one of those things that is not addressed or overlooked that someone needs to open up and dig into and do something for so if there's someone out there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if, if you don't have i don't know responsibility or a job or whatever you just want to put an action plan that that sounds like a chat gpt thing yeah like someone but needs we, to we should, they could pop that answer out in like a minute yeah someone needs to do <laughs> but if you about do have this. an answer you can email us to uh vegas realty check at gmail dot com and answer that question for us yeah yeah i just feel like like someone you know the state's like looking into all these like affordable housing things and all these other things like that this is something that they should look into this affects a lot of homeowners yeah so it, it just it just doesn't seem right well to i me. think hoa is because they're specific to their communities they sort of fall in a gray area i don't know what kind of 
but le legislation could sort of govern that. So if your HOA has this uh, this assessment, it substantially affects your home value. So there's you know there's there's repercussions from it. Like it just doesn't. It's just not right. Yeah, um, and when you have that assessment on, uh, lenders always going to take the HOA and the assessments and everything into consideration, and that affects your purchasing power. Absolutely. So absolutely. you might be able to afford the list price, but once you attack on those prices, then you lender will be like, no, that's not the property for you. So that's just one less spot in the valley you can buy. Yeah. And then it stays on the market for longer and then the value goes down and you know, all of those. So, um, in addition to that, um, <laughs> we all know this, I don't even know why I'm reporting it, but Review Journal reported it. So I'll just say it. Um, Californians are out competing Nevadans on home offers. Really? That's Duh. shocking. And I didn't see that like yeah. every day. Yeah, so well, most days. Um, so I, I brought up all this <laughs> HOA stuff, and I totally like hijacked our show. So I'm sorry, but I. You know. Well, the good news is it's our show. Yeah, <laughs> we can do whatever we like. <laughs> so um, we did have some listener questions. I don't think we'll get to all of them today, but um, we host... didn't even get to price reductions. Oh, we didn't. Even yeah, we did. We talked about price reductions. Oh, they were... oh yeah, that's right. They're price... not. Oh yeah, that price led drops, into the dropped. Eight. Yeah, yeah, price drops dropped. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so our first question is from Jose. Okay. Um, Jose made an offer on a home. It was lower than the sales price. They said no. Um, he wants to know if he can try again. Uh, because they didn't counter him or anything. Yeah. He was just ghosted. They just rejected. So one thing you have to remember, Jose, when you're sending offers on homes, and all buyers have to like take this into consideration, sometimes sellers get emotional. <laughs> They're just people. <laughs> They're just people. Sometimes they get emotional. They get offended. Um, they get, you know, and I've seen rare cases where the realtors get offended, which I never understand that. I'm like, yeah, don't you take know, it personal. It's yeah, just business. You need to be not attached to that, like emotionally. But, um, you know, a, a good realtor is going to like kind of talk their seller off the ledge of that. And like, you know, let's look at this. Let's counter it. Let's, you know, see if we can work this out. Right. Um, I, I'm always with the mindset. I don't care how low the offer is. I, I think it's better that we counter and tell them where we're going to be right. than just reject, not respond, not you know do anything, have a lot better chance at countering because sometimes the buyers just want to see where you are, right? Yeah. Um, and it's not always a good play for buyers, especially if there is multiple offers or you do have competition because that could cause you to get ignored and you're ignored because they go with another offer. Right. But if you're ignored and they have no other offer, then that's just emotions into play, right? Yeah, that is emotions into play. And I always set ex expectations when I'm sending out an offer to my buyer or sending out an offer for my buyer that, hey, there's a very real chance that they are just going to ignore us. Yeah. I, I, so, I've told buyers that, you know, many times too. But, but um, the good news, Jose. Yeah. Well, the good news is if they so if they ghosted you because they didn't um, like your lowball offer, they didn't like your lowball offer. Let's just you know be real here. So um, <laughs> if they ghosted you because of that and they have no other offers on the table, by all means try again and maybe come back with like a you know like ask your realtor to just kind of like give like an explanation. You know like hey, I know we came off on the wrong foot. Let's try this again. You know I've 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 groveled before just to make you know like a. Uh, pull things together. Totally. totally. It's like, only business. Yeah. Right? It's only like, business. You have to like set your ego aside sometimes totally. and do what's right for your client. So that could happen. But if they ghosted you because they had another offer that was better and they chose not to respond to yours and just went with the other, well then yeah, you can submit as a backup offer. But if they're in contract already, your chances are, are probably pretty low. So really yeah. depends on what they're doing now. Um, and, uh, that is, yeah. And for realtors out there, just <laughs> don't be afraid to send a quick email saying, uh, my client didn't like the offer or yeah. we're rejecting this offer or yeah. we went with another offer. Yeah. Yeah. No, a, a response <laughs> just, is always nice. Just keep us in the loop on what's happening. It's totally fine. Yeah. Totally fine. You could like, let us know like, <laughs> yeah, you suck. We went with another one. It's fine. No, but like my seller said they wouldn't take that offer in a million years. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, good. Now we know. What will they take? <laughs> so I had a case recently where I had a buyer send an offer and, and it was low. You know, it was, it, it was, it was, um, a percentage off the list price, you know, not super low, but it was, you know, lower again, 
I, I knew exactly where the buyer was coming from with this. Just want to see where the sellers were. Mm -hmm. Seller, well, I don't know if it was the seller or the agent got like totally emotional and offended and like, I, and she was like, I don't even want to present this. And I was like, well, you kind of have to. So yeah, it's kind of your job. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that you don't love that, but yeah. you get to do it anyway. And that's a rule. So because she said that she didn't want to present it when she was like, well, we're just rejecting. And I was like, okay, well, I want to see that in writing. Yeah. You know, like, so I want yeah, to. Yeah, because you know what? There's a fancy schmancy little checkbox that you can do. That we reject. reject. Yeah. So um, anyway, she had a rejection to me in like 10 minutes. So I'm like, you didn't even like do like a good faith effort of presenting this, in my opinion, you right. know, if you like, you're going to reject in 10 minutes. But the thing is, our offer was a cash offer. And my buyer was very motivated where like, even if they would have countered a little bit, like did any sort of compromise, we would have came to terms. And I know that. And so when she was telling me they were rejecting. So, yes, because <laughs> some buyers absolutely 100% believe that there needs to be an offer and a counter and a negotiation and everything in order to go into a deal. They expect that. They want that. So I always have to set the expectations. Like, I don't know how you've done real estate in other states or in the past or whatever, but in this valley, we don't get rejected offers and the communication that we should get all the time and you need to be prepared for that. Right. Yeah. And and that, that so, you know, I had this conversation when she's like, we're just going to reject. And I was like, uh, I, I really think you should at least try to counter. Let's, you know, at least see if if we can come to terms, you know, right. like where, where are they at? She, no, no, we're rejected. So sent over a rejection in like 10 minutes, which was the silliest thing ever. So my buyers then got, you know, emotional too. So they're like, I don't even want to deal with them. They didn't even like give us a, you know, consideration. They sent over a rejection that fast. Like they, my buyers were upset then. Yep. So now the whole thing's blown up, right? So we go find another house. Buyers fall in love with another house. We're in contract. We did the same thing except for the seller countered and we came to terms. Right. Right. So it's not, you know, it's just a different person. So here we are a month later, buyers closed. Um, <laughs> the, um, the listing agent from that first house reaches out to me like, oh, our house is still sitting here. You you want to buy this one? Guys, yeah. guys, come buy this house. Like, It'll be so fun. Yeah. And it was a team. So it was like someone else on the team um, that reached out to me instead like, of the hey, initial person. Like, hey, we saw that you did yeah. an offer. We'd love to see if you're still interested. Yeah. And I was like, that whole situation played out so bad. And that was so reckless. Like, yeah. It was so like, why, why did it even turn out that way? Like, didn't even want to like have an open conversation. We could have made it work and it just, you know, went nowhere. And now you're still on the market and we closed. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I've had situations like that and it is, it's emotion and ego that in which, you know, everybody gets emotional and everybody has an ego to some extent, mm -hmm. right? But you just try and reel it all in and make the best decisions you can around the circumstances that are surrounding that transaction. Yeah. And just understanding, like when I see, you know, when I see an offer come in, I, I, I got an offer yesterday that, um, gosh, it was like 70,000 under. And I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> what You're are like, they thinking? I love how optimistic you are. <laughs> yeah. But we're just going to have to fine tune this. And then I bet you countered. Uh, of course. I so you know, talked to the seller and, and I, that's, that's just the, the things, um, you know, and I, I don't, I haven't heard back. We're probably not going anywhere with that. There was way too right. big of a gap. There's a big gap. But again, what if they were just trying to see where we're at in that counter. And I've had those cases too, where it was like crazy far off. It sounded insane. We countered and they're like, okay. <laughs> so I had something very similar to that where they offered, I think it was 65 grand under and my seller was super offended, not interested. You know, I can't believe they, you know, what makes them think this is the best house. It's got four walls and a roof. Right. And so then you just have the conversation and you sort of uh, mediate those emotions for them. And then I was like, well, let's just counter. And they're like, oh, they wanted to counter back at 65 grand over list price. And I was like, okay, so that's just being petty. Yeah. Let's, let's not be petty, but let's come back with a realistic offer. If you took this amount, this is what it would look like on your net sheet. How's that feel? And they ended up countering back at list price and the buyer accepted it. They just wanted to play the real estate game. They just wanted to Let me to see what it. I can get away with. It's like earn it, right? They're like, I want to earn this. I want to <laughs> yeah. do this. Yeah. I want to see where we're at. I want to, you know, they watch suits. I don't know. Like... <laughs> <laughs> they watch suits. 
<laughs> they just want to do some together. Sometimes that's that's all it is. It's that simple. So, it, well, it, for that particular transaction, it was they just wanted to play real estate counter and negotiations, and my seller wasn't having it. They countered back at list, and the buyer was like, "All right, we accept." Yeah. And in December, I had a, a random like this doesn't happen. So let me not set that expectation. <laughs> it was just one of those things, like all the stars aligned. But we had an offer that was forty thousand under and I'm like ah, worst they could say is no you know my buyer right. wants to send it I'm like I don't think so like usually this doesn't perform well you know when we send these offers but let's give it a shot see what happens you know like worst they can say is no and then we move on right and um we but sent what did it. they say they said yes and accepted it as is without a counter I was like are uh. they crazy but, sure do love yeah. a motivated seller. You sure do love a motivated <laughs> seller. So you never know. And, you know, at, at this point, it's like, you know, sometimes you just got to just go with it and remove your emotions from the transaction and let's see what we can work out. You yeah, know? But, totally. Yeah. But that doesn't, again, I don't want to put that ex, uh, that that um, expectation out there that that can happen because in reality, when it comes to like your list price from a seller's perspective, I, I usually say like the best rule of thumb is if they're going to come down, um, if they're going to come down 10, 20, 30,000, 40,000 from their list price, in most cases, unless the seller has some like crazy motivation that they need this home sold ASAP, which sometimes those guys are out there, you know, yeah, um, or they have a number that was lower than what the initial list price was. And there's those people out there too, where they're like, if I get in their head and they never share it with anybody, right? But they're like, if I get this number, I'm good. Yeah. So um, you never know where, that, where, where they are with that. But in most cases, a realtor... Once they're 30 days on the market, they're going to go in and ask for like a $10,000 reduction at minimum. Right. Right. Some or, people, sometimes it's not even 30 days because our market moves so fast. We sometimes have rewritten it in the listing agreement that after 12 days on the market, we're going to decrease five grand. And after 25 days on the market, we're going to decrease by another 10 grand or whatever, because you're trying to find the Sweet spot the sweet where spot. people are putting eyes on it, thinking it holds value, and then they want to go see it. Yeah, and there's times where I've had as as little as like a five five thousand dollar adjustment that all of a sudden create I've had multiple a two thousand dollar adjustment create a frenzy. <laughs> yeah, so, so you never know where it's at. There's always a number that works, right? But a lot of times when you're thinking, and I, I share this with my buyers, if it's a house that they really don't want to miss out on, right? You know, right. but they want to negotiate still. Is like, okay, well, a lot of times. And the seller's agent will tell them instead of coming down thirty thousand, let's adjust ten and see if we get more, more offers, action. more action or whatever. Like that's a big, you know, a big step to make in between. You want do you want to do gradual adjustments or do you want to go forward with this offer? Or do you want to counter this offer? So there's a lot of things to take into consideration there. Yeah, totally. And a lot of things to take. One of the things to take into consideration is the agent's ability your agent's ability to communicate with other agents because before even sending out an offer if you're going to do it 40 grand under just having a conversation with the list agent could give you great indication if that's even a possibility are they going to ghost you are they you know going to accept it can we play ball are there going to be negotiations and when that happens you want a good realtor on your side that can communicate you're a good realtor yeah <laughs> How do they get a hold of you if they want to communicate with you? <laughs> so you can call me, 702-308-2878. You can text me. And Tiana, also an awesome realtor, how do people reach you? Well, you can always call or text me, 702-379-9948. Just throwing my information out on the internet. Yeah. Go do your thing, algorithm. Find my clients. <laughs> yes. Um, if you guys have listener questions, um, and we'll we'll get to them eventually, but <laughs> maybe not today. Today's not that day. But if you do have them, you can email them to us. Yes. Um, so that's going to be Vegas Realty Check at gmail dot com. And uh, we do have our um, our Linktree website active with like lots of different tabs. Yep. You can even submit your listener questions on the tab. Um, so that is at uh, realtycheck.vegas. So check that out. You can link to everything, our socials, everything that we have going on there, our show, our audio, our YouTube, 
wherever. We're all in one place now. All things, everything, Vegas Realty Check for both Trish and Tiana. Yes. And then if you do find value in that content, make sure that you um, join our tribe, like, share, subscribe, hit the little bell notifications. That way you're notified every Thursday when we are here talking all things Vegas real estate. Until next week, Vegas, have a great week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.